So I'll show you a little bit about the, um, the clinic that I work in. It's um, in Maidstone in Kent and uh, this evening I'm going to show you a little bit about the surgery with Omnitaper. I'm going to talk about the digital pathway. I'm going to show you full arch as well as single tooth. Full arch completely digital pathway. I'm going to show you a little bit about guided surgery with Omnitaper and uh, that will be the extent of what we talk about tonight. And I have uh, two, two practices. Uh, one is in South East London. It's in a large um, multi-clinic health centre with doctors, physiotherapists, pharmacy, like a little hospital. And it's an eight surgery uh, clinic. And then the other clinic I have is in Kent. It's about 40 kilometres away from London. And this is a smaller clinic, which is just implants. And, uh, and this clinic has uh, four surgeries and we take referrals, mainly referral based for uh, implant reconstructive surgery. And we do um, uh, run a, a study group, so we have uh, many local dental surgeons come to us for um, training in restoring on implants we place. So it's the typical story of network of referral pattern. So for me, it's essential that the implant I use is able to be reliably used by referring dentists at all levels of experience. That it's an easy system to understand and reliable system to understand so I can be confident that the dentist is not going to have problems in their surgery away from my clinic. And as I say, my background, I'm an oral surgeon, but in the UK, being an oral surgeon doesn't limit you to oral surgery. We can also do other aspects of dentistry. So. I limit my practice to implantology, but I also do restoration on my more complex cases uh, myself. Um, I work in a team of, I have 21 dentists work for me, with seven of them who are doing nothing but implantology. And I have two anaesthetists also on my staff, because a lot of what we do is uh, large volumes of minor oral surgery. So we do two and a half, three thousand cases a year involving exodontia and third molar work and, and this sort of thing as an alternative to hospital provision. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm very involved in hospital and um, Royal Colleges, so I'm staying very, um, very in contact with education and current trends and that keeps, gives me my professional interest. But most of all, I've exclusively used dense splicerona implants for the last 21 years. Uh, before that, I did use Calcitec for about 12 years, um, but Calcitec was having problems in the UK, and I looked very carefully for an implant that would satisfy all my requirements, and I tried Zive, and I had a very strong, happy relationship with Zive for 21 years of my career. Um, it's been a really, really good experience. I was the first in the world, I was really lucky, the very first in the world to place an Omnitaper and that was in May 2022. So the very first Omnitaper available was in May. And, and I have to say, I'll, I will tell you the quick story of this. Um, they asked the ambassadors who were going to be dealing with Omnitaper, please find some cases and photograph. You know how it works. With it. We find four or five cases to photograph extensively for the ambassador cases. So I lined up cases. They were all friends or family or people that I knew that I could photograph and make a nice, nice case. And um, they said, this will be ready to be done in January of 2022. So January 2022, where are the implants? Oh, there's a bit of delay. It will be February, end of February. So I phone the patients. I say, it'll be another month. The implants will be ready in a month. And then February comes and they say, it will be March. It's a bit of a delay. So after the third or fourth delay, I said, I need these implants. So they worked very carefully and they rushed and got these ready. And actually, um, Dirk, my good friend, Dirk Furlerman, who's the man behind Zive, he flew over from Germany with this box of implants, which were the first ones. They were still hot from the factory, and like, 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 um, like Spanakopite in a box in the morning. You know? so, and he arrived with these implants, uh, and he said, this is the very first um, Omnitaper that will ever be placed in the world. And I placed that. And I placed that on a patient who's a good friend of mine, Chris Lorenzo. 
And he's Greek, he's from Athens. So uh, the first omnitaper implant is in a Greek patient, you'll be pleased to know. So I qualified in 1982. I went to university in 1978. So that might possibly make me the oldest dentist in the room. Yeah, quite possibly. So 1978 is when I went to university. And that's me in the middle, okay, with my arms folded, okay. Believe it or not, that's a 17 or 18 year old um, uh, young dental student. In his first year, first year at university, would be dissecting bodies and playing with a bit of, um, of um, early clinical work. And in 1978, this was technology. This was the state of computing in 78, okay. So, the, the thing is, the world has changed incredibly in our times. And I'd like whoever thinks they're the youngest person in the room, and I can see some possible candidates, to consider how the world has changed even in your lifetime. It's changed a lot in my lifetime. But my daughter is 25, and she says to me, Oh, Dad, I remember a time that was so easy, before Instagram, before Facebook, before Amazon. Life was so easy, simpler, more enjoyable. This is a 25-year-old reflecting on how technology and everything has progressed. Think about how your car talks to you now, tells you where to go, tells you how to go. When you're parking a car, it, it tells you how to park. This, this was impossible. Even 10 years ago, it wasn't possible. So, you know, I look at this, 1978 was when the very first Star Wars film came out. 1978, and that's when I went to university. And this was fiction, complete fiction. But you know, you now have more computing power in your pocket. I left my phone up there in case it distracts me. You have more computing power in your pocket than the entire computing power that put the first astronauts on the moon. Your iPhone, your Android phone, has more computing power than the whole of the moonshot. It's incredible. We would never have thought this. So how is it, I ask myself, that for the last 100 years, 60 years, I mean, polyether impression I was at university 40, over 40 years ago, and polyether was being taught. And right up to now, we're all still using polyethers or silicones, or whatever. And yet everything else has technologically advanced. Sure, we've had digital solutions in dentistry for a while, but we aren't able to apply them, or haven't been, to all situations. And I have to honestly say that I would go to meetings that were Dense Supply Summit meetings. You had a fantastic summit here, which I was fortunate to attend in May or June this year in this very hotel. Many of you would have come to this meeting. It was a fantastic meeting. And with envy, I used to look at the people who were using some of the different implant systems and how they were able to work with a full digital pathway. I'd listen to Mark Ludlow, the famous Mark Ludlow, showing the results with scanning. And with Zive, I could do one unit, maybe two units. But a full arch with Zive, there was no supported signature digital workflow. And so I felt left behind. I felt like other people were enjoying the party. And with Zive, I wasn't. And I loved Zive so much that even though she wasn't able to do this. I still stayed loyal to Zive because you know the very many surgical advantages that you get with Zive. Reliable, economic, and you f it's a simple surgical protocol that always works with high success. So when I was told that OmniTaper was going to introduce the EV connection that meant Zive was going to get that makeover that she really deserved. And I was very excited. So now, 
we start, I started, as I say, placing my first few Omni Taper just last year, May, June last year. And I was given a very limited number, just a small number, before it was released to the market. And it wasn't actually released to our UK market until the end of January this year. <laughs> and I can tell you that we sorted out, we gave all our stock of Zive back to um, Densply, and they exchanged it for the Omni Taper in the UK, that's what we did. And we set a date, it was in April of this year, and we changed from Zive entirely to Omni Taper. So that was a very exciting prospect. And so now we're doing entirely fully digital protocols. And I can say there's only one situation, one situation only, when I'm working with um, analog techniques now. And I'll show you and explain that in a little while. So as my good colleague did the introduction um, of the, the, the benefits and the similarities between the systems, this is a familiar colour to you. This is a familiar shape to you, sorry. Okay? So I, I think of, I think of, of OmniTaper and Zive like the new and old iPhone. The older iPhone was a particular colour. You could get it in space grey or whatever. And the newer one is, in, is, is a different colour. The immediate thing, the only thing that you can tell the difference between the two when you look at it in the packet is that OmniTaper is a slightly different colour to the surface of Zive because it has osseous speed <coughs> rather than cell plus. In every other respect, it's an identical external shape profile implant. So my friends, don't be frightened of using Zive surgically. It will perform pretty much identically to the Zive that you are used to. So there's very little, very little to fear in the transition. You will have no disruption in your pra practice if you embrace OmniTaper. Internally, the turbocharge, the engine, has been improved with the benefits of the EV connection, the conical um, seal that you'll get. Uh, and it is the only connection, and this isn't, I don't believe this is highlighted enough. It is the only connection that was designed really from the outset to be a digital, compatible digital solution combined with Atlantis, combined with a scanner, a very, very powerful tool to give you beautiful patient-specific restorations in the modern context. So from diagnosis and planning, which I'll show you presently, through to surgery and temporization, right through to final restoration, OmniTaper can take you on that journey digitally. And I'm doing entire cases now model-free. Full arch, model free. Something I was unable to do just 12 months ago. So 2023 for me has been a really exciting time. Now I'm, I'm 65 years old and I would have been enjoying the prospect, well maybe it's time for me to start to retire. But Densply have made it very difficult for me to retire because just as I was thinking of it, they introduce a fantastic combination of, of surface, and technology and digital work workflow, which I'm enjoying doing. So I'll still be working for a few more years. And it doesn't seem like work when you're having enjoyment with those technologies. Guided surgery. There's good solutions with a dedicated guided surgery kit with the OmniTaper. Very easy to use. And there isn't a surgeon in this room who doesn't think, yeah, guided but I've got fantastic eyes and I've got fantastic hands and I can put this in perfectly. But you know, there are situations. Consider the congenitally missing lateral incisor on a young patient, a very young patient, and the orthodontist has moved it, but you haven't got that much space. Space is limited. That patient deserves guided surgery for you to give them the very, very best positioning of that implant with minimal risk to the adjacent teeth. So there are situations beyond doubt where even the most experienced and most perfect eyesight surgeon will go, guided is the way to go. And OmniTaper will provide you with this solution. 
But for me, the most exciting thing is to be able to do full arch cases like this, completely model-free, completely digitally. And everyone said, you should work up to it, Ben. And, whatever. and I said, no, I'm going to try it right from day one, right from day one. And now we've done many cases, even in just a few short months we've been working, and it works, and it's straightforward. And, the t and actually, you don't have to be that good at scanning. I'm not great at scanning, but the prime scan seizes the relevant information just sufficiently that it can put the story together and the technician can deal with it. And if there is a, 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 any issue with the data, the technician will find it and communicate with you, so it's easy to solve. So we can go from this to this, and I'll show you this case in a bit more detail. So Zive, you know, you, you know about it, you know it's trimodal design, you know it's fantastic primary stability, it's easy to place, the collar, everything. But the OmniTaper gives you, in addition, the OsseoSpeed surface and the EV connection, and one or two other benefits, actually, which, which I'll tell you about. And again, my good colleague showed you this, uh, the, the surface and the connection, but what it's doing is combining. See, when a, a new implant design comes out, you think, well, is it tested? Is it going to perform well? But this isn't a new design in reality. This is combining two proven technologies and putting them together to give you an enhanced experience. You know the Zive works, and the EV has been around for, I think, at least nine years. It's, it's a few years that EV has been around, so you're taking these technologies and putting them together. And all the benefits, again, you're familiar with it, but it it's respects the bone with the active bone control. Um, you, if you're used to placing Zive, you'll be very used to this type of uh, concept that it develops great primary stability with the preparation protocol, the condensing thread design. But also, now we go from the Cell Plus, the old Fryolit Cell Plus surface, which was a good surface, and we've all benefited from that for many years, but there is an enormous amount of proven data with the OsseoSpeed surface. And the OsseoSpeed surface, uh, as, as you can see here, um, it, it has better bone retention than many of the rival surfaces on the market. The one thing I have noticed, and the other people in this room who've placed some OmniTaper, you actually develop a little bit more primary stability more quickly with OmniTaper than you do with Zive. And that's because the average surface roughness, the average across the whole of the surface, is a little bit greater than that of the old um, Cell Plus surface. So as you wind the implant in, because it's a little bit more friction, I find you get greater primary stability. You need to bear that in mind with your Crestal drill. You might just need to use the Crestal drill a little bit more than you're used to with the uh, Zive implant. But the great thing is, the great thing is the mystical power of seven. You know, there were seven dwarves, there are seven colors of the rainbow, there are seven phases of the moon, there are seven deadly sins, but there are seven slots in the OmniTaper um, implant. And that seventh slot, that seventh position, that seventh little engagement, allows for that patient-specific and uh, digital workflow to be made very easy. So that's the EV connection. And you can have abutments which go for six. So for instance, I use MUAs, multi-unit abutments, which just connect to the six. You can have completely non-indexed. You can have MUAs, which are non-indexed if you wish to use them. But when you're going for an Atlantis uh, milled patient-specific restoration, it will engage all seven of those grooves. We all know about the benefits, the hygiene, the micro-leakage benefits of a conical seal, and the mechanical benefits of a conical seal. So it will retain crestal bone more favorably. The performance of this we are yet to see, but I'm involved in a study over the next five years which is analyzing the marginal bone um, performance. So there are many advantages on the aesthetics. The, the soft tissue chamber concept, which allows you to develop a thicker band of soft tissue so you don't get this ghosting through of the abutment um, colour. 
the graying out should be minimized because it respects the soft tissue. So I'm very excited that I'm now working in this EV family. It's very nice to spend Christmas with your family and it'll be very nice to spend Christmas with my EV connection at last. The drilling sequence you're used to, the color coding is slightly different, but the medium, what they call the medium, is gold. And that surely is the most common one. We all want gold, and that is the most common one that you, you would work with. But the Crestal drill, we would use just perhaps a little bit more than we used to with Sive to control that primary stability so you don't exceed the recommended torque values. And I personally am looking for a torque of about 35 Newton centimetre for the stability. Sure, you can go higher, and there's many studies, I think Treasy and Kayat had a lot of studies about the uh, higher torque values, but most of us are comfortable that we're not stressing the components, we're not stressing the connection by remaining at about 35. The, the delivery and packaging is improved, my nurses love this, the surgical tray is very simple, and very intuitive, colour coded, which is delightful and it works just fantastically, like your Zive implant in, in all qualities of bone. Um, th there is a difference that I was going to say, that is that it's a type 4 titanium, CPT, which is stronger than the two type 2 that the old Zive was made of. So it actually it's a stronger implant mechanically. So I'm going to show you the first um, Omnitaper case. So this is the very, very first one in the world done. It was back in May. And it's, it's not a perfect case. It was just a, a, a selection that this patient was available and ready. This is Chris, my friend. And I have done Zive implants on the other side of his mouth. He cracked and broke a canine just at the right time that we needed to, to do an Omnitaper case. So we'll do it as a little video so I, I can stop talking for a bit. And you can watch. It's more entertaining to watch. See, I do work quick. <laughs> I felt very guilty this morning when uh, Dr. Parvini was showing beautiful flapless approaches and I thought, I'm quite a butcher. But then this fellow's uh, gums were quite scarred and uh, recited and damaged already and I wanted to show uh, a good exposure for the film to, uh, to make it easy and, uh, and visible. So I won't insult your intelligence by explaining what I'm doing. I'm drilling a hole to put an implant in. It's as simple as that. You've all done it in this room hundreds, thousands of times. What I'm showing you is that it's a comfortable protocol that you're used to. It's the same protocol that you would have for, for Zive, basically. Just in stages, colour-coded drills and um, going slowly up. Little quirks or things that maybe are odd to me. I'm a great believer in using a bone trap with autogenous bone harvesting from the drill site. Um, because I, I believe you've got BMPs in there and other uh, good chemicals that are the patient's own that will help to kickstart um, bone regrowth. So I, I, I am a great believer in using the bone trap. My nurses are very careful to use the bone trap in a hygienic method. We don't suck the back of the mouth with the trap in place because you'll drag contaminated saliva over it. Um, but you get useful bone from the bone trap. And the bone trap is made by Dent Serona that we, we use. Um, and this particular case, you'll probably look at it and say, well, you've gone for a submerged protocol. You're covering with a cover screw and suturing rather than going for a healing cap at word go. And I'll say you're absolutely correct. And you'll say, well, why? And the, the complicated clinical reason is that when Dirk flew across from Germany with his box of um, implants, we didn't think to also bring some healing caps with us. So, um, so the healing caps I had to wait a few weeks to, to get. So it's a submerged protocol. Okay. You know, this, if, you had, if I didn't tell you, you'd think this was Zive. This, this is exactly the Zive protocol. 
One in great benefit now, I personally did not like the 0.9 driver. I didn't like the 0.9 driver in the healing caps because it never was a very positive fit and it was a very fragile interface. This now all uses exactly the same driver, the 1.2 driver for, for everything. Okay. So that driver you use for all the prosthetic parts, the, the cover screw, the healing caps, and the final restoration. So, so far so good. The interesting bit now comes with the restoration. In that, so there's the healing cap. This is a two-piece healing cap, which is perhaps more canine shaped. It's got a little bit more of anatomical shape. There I am with my IOFLOW scan flag. And this is an Atlantis design for the abutment and the zirconia milled crown. There's the final crown produced on a printed model, completely digitally. And uh, there's the crown fitted in place. I can't wait to get my hands on implanting the rest of his teeth slowly but surely. So that's the first case. And those are those um, heel design healing caps which we now have as well with the more anatomical shape and obviously different sizes and different shapes. Second Omni Taper case, nothing special, but just really just to sh show it and emphasize it. The implant is exactly looking like a Zive implant, just a slightly different color, reflected by the fact it's the osseo speed surface. And there's the implant situated and placed, scan flag uh, for a digital solution, printed model, and there's the crown fitted. So the crown is the nice one, not the ugly one behind, but the nice one. So the ugly one is the patient's own old crown from the previous time. Simple multiple cases. Uh, so here's um, a very nice lady that is a, a friend of my wife's. She's got two missing um, molars up there, premolar and a molar. So simple case. Nice straightforward protocol, implants in place. The temp bases look very similar, same sort of shape and profile to your Zive ones that you're used to. A little bit of uh, bone trap as well as some um, uh, xenograft, a little bit of xenograft and a collagen membrane, dense glycerona. Uh, healing caps which allow me to develop the shape that we want for a premolar and a molar. The big ugly amalgam, that will get replaced as well. Look at the quality of the soft tissue around those healing caps, the, how well the soft tissues are developed and tolerating the, uh, the, the titanium of the healing caps. Scan flags, the Atlantis design, same as the single tooth situation. Printed model with the um, screw retained zirconium crowns on Atlantis bases. There's the fitted crowns. We've replaced the amalgam with a nice composite in the four and we have, look at the soft tissue quality is nice, the crown emergence is nice, all done digitally without any uh, impressions. This is something which we're able to now do routinely, day in, day out, using OmniTaper. <coughs> if you really, if you prefer the idea of analog, it's imp and it's important to have the analog solution, because if you drop your prime scan head on the floor and you break it, or if you run over the cable with your dental stool, or if you're running three surgeries or four surgeries, and one of your colleagues is using the scanner and you've got a patient waiting, you can say, okay, we'll just take an impression. So of course we have impression uh, available in the, in the clinic. So I'm involved in a five center study uh, looking at the five year performance of OmniTaper. We started the study at the beginning of the year and we've been running it through. We've now recruited all the subjects, 140 cases, and we're now going to go into the monitoring phase. So they've recruited, we've done all the surgery, and now we're gonna do the final restorations and then long-term performance. And for the protocol for this, we were using analog technique, not digital technique, and we're restoring them with a um, tie, tie base um, with a milled zirconia restoration for screw retain. So every case is specific and we're using exactly the same protocol. 
So though I was excited to have all this digital technology, I've now done, I think, 40 cases myself, 40 single tooth using just the uh, analog techniques. And I have to say, the accuracy of the impressions, the, uh, the, the way that it's all going together and fitting, I'm barely having to do any adjustment of the single tooth crowns. So, you know, it, this is the impression copings for the EV. This is for the open tray technique. You've got a whole selection of long and short. When you have the three mil, they only make the long because a three mil diameter short impression coping wouldn't have the stability. So um, these are the, the, the impression copings. And if you prefer closed tray, you have a closed tray solution. For those of you that were closed tray with Zive, you're used to the little transfer cap that when you take the impression, it's buried in there. I've experimented with Zive over the years. And I have to say, whether or not you use that plastic cap seems to make no difference to the outcome of the accuracy of fit. It's just a security, in my opinion. And this design should work perfectly well. Personally, I've not done any closed tray impressions on Omnitape. I've done open tray impressions. But just for confidence sake, it goes to, this is one of the study cases. It goes together very well. Um, the, it, the EV seats easily. It's very intuitive. If you've not used EV connections, the company says you don't really need to take an x-ray to verify that it's down because it really only goes down in one position and as you screw it, it self seeks and seeks seats. It's very positive. It took me very little time to get used to it. And then, it just performs as you'd expect any open tray um, technique, so very straightforward. We do Ostel readings routinely for this study, and I have to say we're getting very, very good high Ostel readings, average readings, all the way through. So we've Osteled pretty much all, or most of the, all of the cases for the study, and I Ostel also many of my routine cases uh, out of interest, and we get high readings for the ISQ. So let's do full arch, immediate load, model free. So this gentleman is a veterinary surgeon local to, to where we are. And um, so the story of that was when, the, when they were launching um, Omnitaper. So I, I, I was interested, when are you going to launch Omnitaper? They said, not, not till 2023. And then in 2022 in September, I got a phone call saying, Ben, could you go to EAO in Geneva to do the launch of Omnitaper. It was about four weeks' notice. And I went, I haven't got any, I haven't done many cases. I've only done three or four cases. I said, I've got to have a full arch. So I said to our treatment coordinator, find me a full arch case. So she said, I found you one. Um, and so the week before I flew to Geneva, I got the patient in on a Saturday with my nurses and we did the case. So this was all worked up and done in a space of a, of a, a week. But basically, this gentleman is a very nice gentleman. He's, um, he's a veterinary surgeon, um, and um, he's 60 years old, I believe. And he was, um, I think, marrying a 33-year-old um, veterinary assistant that he worked with. So clearly, he felt he needed to improve his self-confidence and up his image. And an immediate full arch um, case uh, was what was going to make him renovated. So I was very happy to do it. And you can see his lower teeth are in trouble. His molars in the lower are not healthy. His top teeth are not, not healthy. So our periodontist uh, took in, uh, in hand to improve the lower teeth and remove, we, I think he lost um, two molars each side, or maybe one molar each side. But the periodontist dealt with the lowers, and I got on happily dealing with the upper. And so uh, I didn't use guided, I'm, I'm not a great, I don't, I don't feel driven to use guided surgery for full arch cases. Uh, I use a surgical guide, obviously, but I'm very happy to do these cases freehand and using Ben's eyes to, so it's, it's brain-guided surgery, as it's called. So I remove the teeth, a basic osteotomy to level off all this normal story, put the uh, implants in. These are these beautiful omnitapers going into the four positions. Uh, with a little bit of distal angulation to avoid the sinus. You know the protocols, nothing new there. 
There's the um, smart fixed type um, abutments put in place, angled for the posterior, straight for the anterior, nothing new there. Check it sits within the um, parameters of the, of the uh, template. Yes, it's acceptable and we're going to have a reasonable result. Astra bone trap, which I'm very fond of, as you know. I just fill in the, the sockets. Uh, I will use a bit of xenograft as well um, because of the principles of I don't like to leave a big gap in any sockets. I like to fill it so that we have a, uh, a, a no collapse of the facial plate. These are the transfer copings, which you're uh, used to, these sort of transfer uh, tubes, little um, uh, silicone rings to stop um, uh, the acrylic oozing under. Very simple technique to uh, pick up the trumpets. The temporary is adjusted by the technician who, who's working in the little laboratory you have at the clinic. And there's the immediate um, load temporary put in place with just the occlusion. And the centre line is acceptable, the aesthetics, the lips showing, everything is acceptable. We try and get the temporary to be as good a representation of the final so the patient can get used to it and we have to do very little changes to the scheme when we go to the final. And in fact, if the temporary wasn't good, I would remake the temporary because it's far cheaper to make the changes in the temporary and have a, a scheme that's going to work for the final. So this is the temporary that we have in place. And my, in my team, we're doing maybe one or two of these a week currently. We do a lot of full arch uh, in my, my clinic and we're using this, this protocol now of a model-free protocol. There's the um, temporary in place. So then, after three months, the restoration will be done digitally uh, using Prime Scan and a bridge base, Atlantis bridge base, to support the restoration with a milled zirconia um, superstructure luted in the laboratory, uh, cemented in the laboratory uh, for the restoration. So there's the scan. I'm certainly not a great scanner. I, but my laboratory uh, technician, Paul, says that will do. That's enough information. I can make it on that. I was surprised how everybody was telling me how difficult scanning is, how difficult it is, particularly the lower, and I'll show you lower in a second, that it's, you know, it's difficult that they maybe scan the upper, but they lower they're doing analog. And I was just determined I would try from word go, from the beginning, to go totally digital with this. And I was surprised it actually, I'm not having difficulty with it. So I will say, if I can do it, honestly, anyone can, because I'm not a skillful scanner. I will become more so, but I'm able to do full arch routinely now, upper or lower, using the prime scan, because it's so good at capturing the data. Scan of the temporary, so the technician is able to see in three dimensions what the space being occupied by the temporary is. And that allows him to, well, the, the software will put everything together, the soft tissue scans, the uh, MUA scans, the scan flags, the temporary. We do five scans and the opposing and the bite as well. This all gets put together and sent off in the portal to the laboratory. And what the, he's produced for us is the milled bridge base from Atlantis and the PMMA try-in, just a try-in. This is not the restoration, it's just so we could assess lip support, occlusion, and make any modifications in this, uh, in this setup. So there's the temporary in place, center line's good, occlusion's quite acceptable, um, the appearance is good. So based on this, we, we approve this design to go for the final restoration. There's the final restoration with characterization, more lifelike, more, more breathed life into that to make it more beautiful, more natural. There's the final restoration, as I say, milled zirconia, screw retained. Everything's looking good. Everything is respecting the biology and the mechanics of the final restoration to be durable. There's the underside with the bridge base, beautifully cemented together, nicely finished, cleansable. There it is, fitted. There's the radiograph. And you can see the periodontist has removed some of those failing molars in the lower and stabilised the lowers, hopefully, 
for the long term. But hey, if not, we'll be able to give him implant solutions for the lower as well. And there he is, um, completed and uh, restored and very happy with his final result. So that's a fully digital workflow. I tell you, model free, no model at all. Everything done with scanning, everything done in five visits. Five visits from start to finish. It's a game changer for your workflow. And the patients love it because it's so simple. So you didn't even, uh, you didn't even take a bike registration? No. Just yes, digital bike registration. Uh, you just count the, the prototypes yeah. and you superimpose the... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it works. And I'm s astonished by how many of the restorations... It's early days, okay, we've only been doing it this year, but I'm astonished by how many of the restorations need little or no adjustment. I'm going to show you a two-arch case, bimaxillary case, where I fitted them, he bit together, and I checked the occlusion, and I didn't have to touch one thing to adjust it. Uh, it's quite fascinating. So here's the double case, okay. So this gentleman was failing. There's his surgery with the two temporary restorations in place. So I was thinking it's going to be difficult to scan the lower and it is a bit more difficult and there's a bit more artifact or whatever but as, as my laboratory technician Paul who does a lot of digital um, restorations he said if there's just enough data for the computer to seize the data and put it into the matrix as it were so that it can orientate everything and you get that little tick on your prime scan your job is done. Anything more than that is flooding too much information and data. If you do your soft tissue scans first, before you do the scan flags, you've got the anatomy that you need. And then you just need to get the flags enough. And you need to get the flags enough so that if you look at it from one angle, it looks intact. If you've got some areas of the scan flag not, not picked up properly, people seem to go round and round and round all the time, trying to get the perfect, then they get a gap somewhere else. No, you just need enough information that it's able to orientate it for manufacture. So it actually is simpler than you think, in my opinion. So I'm going to show you a problem, okay? I'm going to show you a problem, um, and we'll see what your opinion is of why we have the problem. So these are my verification jigs, and at the same time, the technician has made me my printed little try-in that we're going to do, okay? There's a verification jig there. And oh, go back. And we had a little problem with that unit. Why did we have a problem with that? Why have I had to cut that section away to seat it? So I looked at the verification jig and I thought it looks wrong. It looked wrong in the upper. Can you see how long that sleeve is compared to the others. So when I put it in place in the upper, it wasn't even going anywhere near. So I took a guess that it was one unit completely misaligned. So I cut a V notch in it and it's seated perfectly on the other three abutments. Perfectly. And I did the same with the try-in and put it in place. So let's go back one and it's seated perfectly. So I phoned the laboratory, I said to Paul, could you just check what, what's happened? And he looked at it whilst I was on the phone, and that's the beauty. He doesn't, he doesn't have to worry, he hasn't got the models. He's got the, got the scans there, I've got the scans. He looked at it, he said, oh Ben, I've made a mess up. I've done a little problem with how I processed the software in the lab. He somehow or other, subtracted the abutment and that one was going direct to the implant head. So I said, okay, well I understand how the problems occurred. Based on that I think we can go to completion because he could account for why the software was wrong, why he had made an error. He'd subtracted the abutment and made that jig and that um, temporary, not temporary, the try-in so that it went to the implant head. So these are the um, try-ins in place. And the volume's a bit low. I'm getting the patient to talk Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I want to see how his lip support is, how his mouth is working 
around and how the phonetics are. And importantly, I move around to the profile to see how he is in profile. So the lip support is good, the amount of tooth showing is good, it's a satisfactory uh, restoration plan. So that's then converted into, so I'm sorry the colour's not, I think the computer as you can see the, the projector's not rendering the colour beautifully. But this is through to completion, these are the upper and lower milled zirconium uh, restorations on the bridge base. And there they are fitted and I had to touch nothing by way of adjustment. Everything fits together perfectly. So full arch, upper and lower, two arches were able to do full digital pathway. Uh, analog situation here. So this patient was treated by in another clinic, not in our practice, and he'd had some problems uh, over some years with failure of uh, some implants, Zive implants. And he has a single Zive implant remaining on the upper right hand side. So I've placed Omni tapers in the remaining sites to allow him to go for a full restoration. I've only just placed these about three months ago. I'm in the process of doing the restoration. And this photograph I took on Wednesday before I came out here. So that, this is as far as I've got with the case. But because I've got a Zive implant in there, I'm opting to do a totally analog approach for this full arch. So I'm using the analog transfer coping. So if you want to do analog for your full arch, for single or whatever, OmniTaper will allow you to do this with no problem. Guided surgery, I don't do that often, but there are specific indications where I would. And one indication was when Dentsply say, please could you photograph a guided surgery case? So this is done specially so that we'd have something to show. Um, with the, with the new kit, so I used my Simplant for the planning, joined with the Dentsply, they come up with a solution, a suggested solution, you approve it, uh, they will mill and prepare um, a surgical guide based on this design, so there's the surgical guide ready for action. Um, a lot of people have problems with surgical guides that perhaps don't fit down. I've done a few surgical guides now using my Simplant and I have to say I've not had a problem of them not fitting. Um, but it, it can happen. You hear it's a common complaint. So you have to be prepared to go non-guided and have a solution in case. But th for, the, for the ones I've done, I've not had a problem. Uh, the fit of the sleeves into the metal is extremely good. The fit of the burrs is very good. So this is the guided surgery. Very logical. Put the implant in through the surgical guide. You've got little inspection channels you can look to see how you're orientating. There's the implants in situ, uh, placed. Healing caps in place, leave it to heal. There's the um, positioning. Actually, I, think, I don't think I could have placed it manually as well as those. Uh, you know, there's very parallel, um, very nice placement. Not my work, it's the work of the computer and the guided surgery. All I did was put the implants in, scan flags, finished restorations, um, completed case. So very easy to do a whole range of digital solutions, even from planning and guided surgery through to a full digital completion. Um, so it's up to November, so we've done more during December, but up to November, we've, um, from April to November, we've placed 536 OmniTaper implants, and we've had um, four failures in two patients, one of which uh, was a, a quite a heavy smoker and in my opinion um, wasn't a good selection. It was one of my colleagues who works with me in the practice. Uh, so that's giving us a very high 99.26% um, survival rate. So um, I appreciate uh, Greek civilization and Greek culture and Greek professionalism and I have three Greek surgeons work with me. I have a Greek periodontist, a Greek implant surgeon, and a Greek oral surgeon who does a lot of MOS for us. And the rest is, uh, but the volume might not be up sufficiently. No. I'm asking him about his, um, I think it's a problem with the, um, the, the, how the volume is adjusted here. Um, the advantage of the digital technology, and he says it's the transfer of data. It's the ability to, to talk quickly with the laboratory 
and to solve problems with that transfer of data. Nick, my other colleague who works with me, why does he use this digital net technology? It's because for him, it's the, in the, the factor that the patients are hugely impressed by it. And I will tell you that as more and more of your colleagues embrace and go for fully digital technology in the next few years, your patients will know what their friends and other family members enjoy in other practices and you will start to feel that you're missing the party. So it's vitally important to keep up with the changes in technology for the good and the growth of your practice. And our laboratory technician, Paul, who, who works at the site there, he says for him, for him the benefit, it's the ease with which he is getting the cases, can plan and discuss it with the, the, um, the surgeon immediately, either by email, text, WhatsApp, or, or a phone call. And you're both looking at the same thing on the screen at the same time, so it makes it very quick. So a little thing I'm going to say is that my passion, my hobby, is flying. I've been flying for 40 years, and um, I, I own a few aeroplanes, but I, one of the, I have a little team called the Last Dogfight of World War II. And the last dogfight of World War II was between an American small spotter plane that was unarmed and a German Fiesler Storch aircraft. And the American got his gun from his pocket and leaned out and shot the engine of the Storch and it um, crash landed. This was 60 miles, 60 kilometers outside Berlin on the um, 12th of April 1945. And it was the very last aerial fight between two aircraft in World War II. And um, the pilot felt so bad shooting down the enemy that he landed next to the crashed aeroplane and got out. And the pilots were fine, apart from one had broken a leg. And he helped him out and bandaged his leg. And that was the last aerial battle of World War II. And so I reenact this battle in two aeroplanes I have. One is a replica of the German aeroplane and the other is the American aeroplane. Clearly I am the hero in the American aeroplane. I'm the, uh, the, uh, the man who wins. And, um, but what the point about this is that 70-year-old, 80-year-old aeroplanes are analogue. They are very analogue. They are historic. This is a historic aircraft. It's not of this day. Okay? And Perhaps analogue dentistry is historic and not of this day. So there I am, you know, with the, uh, my friend. He's a British Airways captain. He flies the big 380 um, for British Airways. And we do this dogfight together at air shows. But I also have another aeroplane. This aeroplane is my family aeroplane. I use it to go on holidays and to travel. I, I use it to often to fly to work and congresses and things. And if I'm going to take my family in the aeroplane, if I'm going to travel long distances through bad weather, I don't want to rely on analogue old technology. And up until a year ago, there were very few digitally approved pathways for a light aircraft to fly and land in bad weather with a fully digital technology. So that is the cockpit of that aeroplane up to last year. And at the same time as I was getting OmniTaper, I was thinking, do you know we have Prime Scan, we have all this digital technology, so shall I upgrade and go for a, a new solution? And the, the technology had just been approved for the aeroplanes to have this for flying in bad weather. So this is now my Prime Scan in the air. Uh, it's got the full digital technology, as you can see, and the autopilot, I can engage the autopilot, and it'll guide its surgery in the air. It'll fly the aeroplane, take it onto approach, and take it almost to touchdown. Uh, I can land it down 70 metres above the ground and 200 metres from the touchdown point before I turn the autopilot off and finish the landing. Fully automated, guided surgery in the air. And so the safety for my family and for myself flying with this technology is incredible, just as the safety and the efficiency in my digital pathway in dentistry is incredible. So my life in both my leisure activities and in my professional life has changed immensely, as will yours as you embrace and move with this. So 
whether it's in our surgery or in the air, our clinics are now fully digital, fully uh, digital workflow. So all I can say, all of our lives have changed enormously. And there's so many advantages by moving from Zive to OmniTaper. So I'd like to thank you very much for, for listening. Um,